how you clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Thursday over here in the Atlantic. Again, we have Philippe over here now curving off to the northeast and on out to sea along this frontal boundary and will probably remain a little bit sheared. It looks a little bit better than yesterday and here with better symmetry of the convection about the center. Hurricane Center thinks it's about close to borderline hurricane status here. It may make a cat one briefly for a little bit of a time as it moves off to the northeast but not getting any stronger than that here and will just be a fairly consistent intensity storm on its way out and will be no threat to land. We're now watching for any potential mischief to start happening in this area of the world as high pressure is building over the eastern United States and we don't have a surplus of thunderstorm activity in this area of the world yet so what we need to catalyze the situation is a little bit of an upper trough to come out of the Gulf of Mexico and start incubating this region and we do have a little bit of a trough sitting back here there's a short wave that's very hard to see that the models forecast to come in replace this trough and amplify so this comes down and amplifies over the Florida eastern Gulf and Bahamas area and starts influencing low pressure development near the Bahamas and the Florida Straits and that's what the models have right now and this is going to be a little bit of a shorter video. I'm just going to show the European and the GFS today and discuss these two. We're going to play this game again. We're going to look at the upper level winds at 200 millibars. This is day five here. And we're going to look and guess where the surface flow is going to be. So you can see the upper level flow. We have a big jet stream. It curves down like this. Then up like this. We have a very sharp trough axis in here over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Sharper than yesterday's runs, by the way. So if we have the upper level trough axis here, we're looking for subtropical development because we can't get development down here under the sub-equatorial ridge so we need development either under the jet stream or under the trough axis and subtropical it's ideal to have it right under the trough axis but it's hard to pull that off sometimes when it's not a closed cutoff up or low so when you get just a trough sometimes it's a little off to the east of the axis more under the baroclinic environment where there's upper level divergence aloft and helps lower pressures on the eastern side of the trough so we would expect probably some sort of broad low pressure to be somewhere over here over or just near the Florida Peninsula on the eastern side of this trough axis since there's an elongated jet on the eastern side. But if we go to the surface map, the low's actually back over here. And you can see that that's directly under this clipping northwest jet stream on the western side of the trough. And it's interesting because it starts out under the trough and then moves under the northwesterly jet. So this low is already going to be weakening in this position. And you can see the, the gradient is stronger over here. There's low pressure extending northeast where the gradient is strongest in here. So it looks natural for the low to want to be over here, but the European doesn't have it there. Now let's go over to the GFS for the same time, 120 hours. Here's the 200 millibar winds. Notice the jet. We have it curving up like this. Same idea, sharp trough directly over the Florida Peninsula right in here. And where would the surface low be? Well, the GFS is a little bit easier. You can you can really see where it is on on this you can see that the jet comes out to the north here and the winds get stronger as you head northward so the surface low is definitely going to be right here just east of St. Augustine and if we go to the surface map look at that I was pretty close there it is right there and yeah I had looked at these maps beforehand but you really can tell where it is by looking at this map over here I did cheat but I did try this beforehand and I didn't cheat the first time but I had to look at the maps of course before I put them up on the video. Now you can see where this is here and there's a big difference from where the European has this in orientation to the trough. My point being that this makes more sense being near or just east of the trough axis right here when this is set up this way and I think this makes more sense than the European. We might start out with development near the Florida Straits that tries initially to move west and we get this broad area of low pressure in here but then we might even see a secondary low try to develop where the dynamics are more favorable on the eastern side of the trough later on and you can see that if we go from the 120 hour European to a different map showing day six you can see that the low starts to move north but it's very broad and weak in here and if you could see the precipitation map which I don't have access to there's very little in here but then 
notice that there's an extension of the trough northeastward towards the Georgia-South Carolina coast, showing where low pressure wants to develop, a little too close to land here to actually go, but you can see the secondary that wants to form here due to better dynamics. That's closer to where the GFS has the low pressure in this area. So between these two solutions, I'm leaning towards the GFS, and right now the GFS is almost alone. The UK Med also supports this idea a little bit more, but the other models are with the European in general. But I think I'm agreeing more with the GFS and UK Met idea right now. Now regarding the eventual intensity of this, if we go back to the 200 millibar, notice the trough in here. Both of these models show that the trough becoming a much sharper, thinner feature than they were showing before. We had more of a broader, lax area of upper level winds near this, under this upper level trough yesterday and the day before on these runs and now notice that we have a bunch of outflow coming out of the eastern pacific really squeezing this off and so we have this very sharp entity in here that's not as conducive for nice feedback tropically which is good news so although we may still get a potent low like this that still this is still bringing gales into the coast here this is tropical storm force winds perhaps a subtropical storm that gets named to florida on the gfs here this would still be a big deal but not something that could become a hurricane or some surprise like that that would result in more damages and a worse situation but it could still be a potent low in here and again, we're still playing with the idea of how this trough will be oriented, er, oriented because we don't have it yet. We can't see it over on the satellite. It's over here. It hasn't amplified yet. We don't have anything going on in here. So there's not much that we can do except diagnose from the models until we see low pressure actually start to develop somewhere in this area and see exactly where it starts and how it starts to evolve. And what we can see is that this area of the world here, see how dry it is? It's not magically going to become horridly moist. So if we have an upper level trough this sharp with a bunch of outflow converging over the eastern Gulf of Mexico, it's going to be pretty dry in this area. There will be a lot of precipitation out east of Florida, which will be soaking this region quite a bit. Several inches of rain are possible in here but there's going to be dry air intruding into any low pressure that does try to develop. So this probably won't be a very focused area of convection if this trough actually looks like this. But it will be a potent little system due to this pressure gradient from the high pressure to the north. We're going to have a nasty few days of weather for Florida if this situation comes true. And I'm leaning more towards this GFS here than I am towards the European having the low way out here and then having nothing going on near Florida. Either way, Florida gets the rainfall with either of these situations, but I do think the low pressure will consolidate a little bit farther east than what some of the models are saying right now. And then if we move on on the European, out to day 10, a trough goes by to the north, we have high pressure built in for a second time, and then by day 10 we have low pressure showing up in the Caribbean, east of the Yucatan, which would be in line with my ideas that this could spawn multiple systems in this pattern, and the MJO will be coming more fully over this region, and we'll start seeing more spontaneous convection down here that could result in a more truly tropical development actually south of the subtropical jet rather than north of it like we're going to have now which would give us subtropical mischief in here. So we've got a couple different opportunities for for trouble to brew in this area of the world during this month of October and we'll have to continue watching this starting this weekend and early next week, Monday and Tuesday, we'll have to watch this area to see potential for subtropical development and lots of rainfall and some gusty winds for here. Probably won't be that big of a deal, but there will be several days of very blustery weather for this area of the world. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.